<clears throat> All right, welcome everyone. March 8th is today. Today is Tuesday, March 8th. And this is the Chaos Community Weekly Chat. I'm Elizabeth. I'm the community manager here, which is why I'm the one talking right now. Um, of course, you do not have to turn your camera on. I always say that just in case, like I wanna just reiterate, it's totally fine. We're very casual here. The uh, minutes are in the chat. And if you would like to add your name, please do so. And if you don't want to, that's also a valid choice that you're, you're allowed to make. We're all about choices here and consent. So there you go. Um, yeah, let's start. All right, so the big news that just came down the path was that chaos is officially going to be in Google Summer of Code this this summer. So yay, yay right. us. This is fantastic news. We are uh, longtime participants in this project. And um, yeah, we're really happy we get to do it again. So uh, here's the official, what our page looks like in case y'all want to see it. There we are. Curiously, if you search chaos from the um, from the main Google thing, three results come up. Ooh, for so, each of our summers of code? <laughs> no, just oh. one chaos. The others, I guess, are close enough to chaos. Hmm. I don't I don't really huh. know why, but we get there are three results. So hopefully people come here. Are we, at the, are we at the top? We are. Yeah, okay. we're number one. Okay. In many things, but yeah. And uh, just so for people to know that um, potential contributors have until April 3rd to um, discuss applications and stuff with us. And then their application period ends on April 4th. So that's when we would need the final um, initial task things done. And we would uh, come together as a community to decide and prioritize which projects we want to offer GSOC, you know, which projects we might want to offer which GSOC students. And then we usually tell Google how many students we like and which ones. And um, then, um, so they, I guess, I'm sorry, April 19th is when their deadline is. And so after April 19th is when we um, have to tell them uh, how things are going. And by May 12th, we have to tell them um, how many slots we want, tell Google how many slots we want. So we have seven projects this year. And if we find a student for every project, we can request request seven students. Um, what about the mentoring, uh, the mentorship? If you are interested in being a mentor, just let me know. Um, you just Slack me. Um, okay. And I will invite you to the Google Summer of Codes mentoring. Okay. And uh, if there's a project, Armstrong, that you or anyone else is interested in, let me know what, which of the proposed projects that we have on our page are, are the ones that you'd be interested in mentoring for. Yeah, that sounds good. I think the one thing now is to make sure that the projects are all, like the issues associated with the projects are tracked pretty closely because questions might yep. come in. And they are, yeah. Yep. So... That's really important. I agree. I will. I will try to oversee the tracking of those. But if if you have a project that you've put in, uh, feel free to do that as well. And you can see all of those issues on our or on a Google Summer of Code page, which I will link. You're putting that in the chat, you said? Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. The notes. Um, and if you are a student, um, here's a link to where you will um, add your name as a potential. Georg has given you an example. So you can just follow that. And here's how the process usually goes if you are not sure. So there you go. So welcome, welcome, Wait, students. That, that's at April 19th. Sean, didn't you say the students have to submit by... If the students have to submit by April 19th. Oh, and, okay. Then I just um, we have until May 12th to tell the Summer of Code admins I whom we want. Okay. For some yeah. reason, I heard April 3rd. But. Yeah, I, I, I was, um, April 3rd is when the sort of, they're expected to have all of their questions asked of our community between now and April 3rd. I gotcha. And then they have two more weeks to finish their applications. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> 
and then we have two, two or three weeks to review the finished applications and decide whom we want to engage in a project. Does anyone have questions, comments, feedback? I had one comment. So first, congrats to everybody. That's really good. And then um, we are just kind of related. We are we are going forward with outreachy at this point. So we were able to secure support from Microsoft for part, at least half of the cost of an outreachy student. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $7,000. So thank you to Emma and thank you to the folks at Microsoft who helped make this happen. And as far as I know, we're also still participating in She Code Africa. Is that right, Elizabeth? We haven't gotten a final confirmation. Um, okay. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't, but yeah, we still don't have that final confirmation. I think it comes at the end of March, maybe. Okay. If I remember, I'd have to look it up, but yeah. Okay. And then Elizabeth, I think you and I had a like a conversation, maybe it was like on email or some other channel about maybe having somebody that's dedicated to watch the mentorship programs <laughs> like yeah because we're also didn't we submit or gonna submit to google season of docs as well yeah we will like yep so like yeah, I just, we probably <laughs> need somebody to maybe like dedicate to track all of these in this case these four different programs just to keep track of dates and you know what's do where and where things are and how the process goes for each one and just to make sure that i don't know yeah, we're doing what we need to do. I agree. Let me think about that. But I think it's okay. a good idea too. I was going to say, is there an action item or not? Mm. Just Matt, think. Right, That's right now, I have an action item related <laughs> to Google Summer of Docs, but I think the action item for this somebody to look at the mentorship programs, I think, would be <clears> that we have to figure out what that what form that might take. But we welcome suggestions. And this always seems to happen every year around this time. Like it gets really, really busy with mentorship yeah. stuff right around summer in the northern hemisphere. So so I, I want to just clarify something because you're talking about better tracking around our engagement just in terms of due dates and logistics predominantly, yes? Yeah, and also projects, I think. So sometimes okay. projects are maybe applicable in one mentorship program, but maybe less applicable. Well, um, the reason I was asking is because as you were talking about it, my head was immediately like, well, we're chaos. So are we also evaluating sort of the impact of these programs on our project as we would in terms of an open source project and garnering metrics around that? So that would be the beginning of it in my sense in terms of providing a statement of all the things that we're getting involved in the kinds of projects that fit better for each individual program. But then at the end of it, how do we deem the success and impact of these programs on chaos the project as an open source project and potentially using ourselves as a test case for metrics around mentorship programs that's a super that's excellent a idea. really good idea wow well now that we're involved in so many <laughs> i feel no. like it it seemingly is a very large component of our productivity for periods of the year so I would, I would love to, to help think through how we might measure that. And I think it starts with the tracking piece of just one, like I would see it starting from, these are all the things that we've signed up to this year. And then looking for diff, like different ways that we could track the long tail of that. So maybe not for right now, cause I don't want to distract the, <laughs> <laughs> the logistics piece of it and ensuring we don't miss any deadlines, but maybe once this program once these projects start going, then we reevaluate that question. And I don't know which working group it would fit in, but. I like that too, because I think there's, I hear a lot of people ask, like, how do we ensure that our mentorship programs um, like can kind of translate into sustained contributions from people as part of the programs? And like, what are the ways to get that better aligned with the community? I mean, if we could, remotely provide insight on that, I think it'd be extremely helpful, not only for us, but yeah. for other people as well. Yeah, and I, I can speak on behalf of Summer of Code, but I think 
they are they are also interested in that too because their program only can see so far in terms of student participation and then the view stops because that's the nature of the program whereas from our perspective in the project we know if people stick around or they don't um, and sort of what was the impact of that one individual program on chaos in a longer term so it's something that that program can't track because of the nature of it but we as a project can track because it's within our own um, within our own wheelhouse so um, I think it could be beneficial to, to many, both the program as well as the project communities. I agree. I'm going to click on this call and Yash was a participant. These are just anecdotal, so it'd be great to get it to be formal. Venu was a participant um, back years ago, and he now works with Patergia. So, I mean, there are there have been successes in this. Okay, cool. Any other comments or questions before we move on from mentorships in general? All right, then. Um, so the next one is uh, we have, we are, just a reminder, in the period of which we are open for feedback for our metrics. Here's the list of all our metrics, all 78 or whatever, I should count them again, I, I don't know. Um, if you look through this list, you will see this little tag that says under review. These are the ones that are, as you would expect, under review. Here's where you can provide your feedback after you look through this metric and you have stuff to add. Who has already added some stuff? So it's on top of things, of as always. <laughs> Indeed. Amazing. Um, to clarify a few of the rules for participation, there are no rules really. You don't have to have been part of chaos really. You don't have to have worked on a metric. You don't have to be in the working group that worked on the metric. You can, it's it's a free for all here. So we, we highly recommend feedback from the general public during this time. And um, we'll take your feedback then and make any adjustments that the group deems necessary and revise the, revise the metric before we release it in April. That's how that goes. So if you have a few minutes and you just want to look, that's where you do that. I know there's some people on the call, maybe, who are new to chaos, newish. So um, if there's any questions about that process or how to get involved, how to, how to review a metric, um, Feel free to ask those questions. Any comments? Uh, I think translations are also happening at the moment. Um, at least I've been seeing like activity in the translations repo. So thanks for folks who are helping uh, there. I also know that there's, it definitely won't happen this round or this release, but um, working with some folks to try to um, get the Spanish translations moving forward. So that'd be pretty cool too. And um, I think the plan is, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the plan is to kind of mirror or mm -hmm. model what we've done with the Chinese translations, that process. I think so. and just I think it worked it. pretty well from, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. And really, so that key piece is having those folks that are um, committed to kind of making that happen. We got the process down like pretty well now, the framework for it. So it's just finding. So if there's, uh, if you are a speaker of another language and you want to take that on, you should chat with us and we can see about that. This is a really, it's a really funny, it's a tricky thing because this is like a whole, it's like a community itself. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people an interest to do translations. So um, I'll, I'll be interested to see how this goes, the point B there that you have. Yeah, yeah. And just for, for future reference, uh, on any open source project, there's usually a need for translations. So if you get sick of chaos, you can take that skill elsewhere because that's always a thing that's missing, you know? We would love for you to keep it here, though. That would be great. So please do that. 
Okay, um, update. It's time for a working group updates. Hooray. Um, Matt G and Sean and or Sean, uh, it's think, your uh, week Matt, to talk about Common. Matt G, Sean. since I had some technical difficulties connecting to Common, so. Okay, well, like all working groups, we have uh, done, I think we had one, maybe two metrics that were released as part of uh, Common. You know, one of the things that we're um, talking about right now is within the common working group is how to take on things that are common to the chaos project. Um, so I think we're just kind of talking through that and it seems to be working honestly pretty well as far as I can understand, as far as I can tell that we spend a little bit of time on, on kind of operational things within the chaos project and then also um, common metrics. So I don't know if anybody else has thoughts on that, but as far as I can tell, it seems like it's working pretty well that we're able to divide the time pretty nicely. Um, there is one thing that I'm hoping to get wrapped up maybe in the next week or two, and that's that privacy ethics document. So this was the, this is the, the 18 documents that were drawn together into one. <laughs> so, I, I had to remove some stuff. So there are some documents that have more content than what this has, you know, like more detail, you bet. Um, but I, at some point I just, I had to, to try to get this down to maybe four pages as to what it is here. And I, I think too, that the main, the main goal of this document is just to <laughs> kind of tell people, these are things that you should probably be thinking about <laughs> when you're dealing with metrics. And so we're just moving people forward, you know, in a direction that gets them to think about privacy and ethics related to um, the collection of data around metrics. The last thing there on the public and the, the, the headers and subheaders should approximately mirror one another. So just in terms of ethics and privacy, um, I didn't, I think I mentioned this last time, or maybe in common, or maybe on Slack, I don't remember, but I just, there's not a lot of, from what I could find, published guidance around trace data and ethics. So unless somebody has things that you could put in here, or maybe put in the chat, I'd really appreciate it. But I feel like yeah. I'm, I'm either not looking in the right place, or there is a, a gap. No, I, I know where some stuff is. Good. Thank you. I did also, um, just as a point of reference, um, popped in a query in uh, the ethical open source Slack, which I'm usually, I just lurk, um, and I got zero responses. <laughs> so I don't know that they know, or else everyone's just ignoring me, which is also a, a good probability, but um, <laughs> yeah. So All right, well, thanks for doing that not being ignored but <laughs> lurking <laughs> i'm i'm really i you know when you have children then that's you become a, a pro pro level wizard at being ignored because that's really what the bulk of your time is spent doing um uh published we wanted published guidelines yeah and the hope is is that we can kind of get this published uh because this is actually the document that is supposed to be the pointer in that ethics statement in the metrics. And so the hope is, is that over the review period, we can get this document done. So when we do the release, the ethics statement within the metrics actually points somewhere. Do you want me to do any kind of like social media blast or like, hey, we're really looking for this piece? The ethics stuff? Yeah. Um, or not yeah i mean if that's that'd be great if is that appropriate like i don't know like i said i just i couldn't find stuff sean said he has stuff it's probably i just don't know where to look or how to look so if people have insight on this that'd be wonderful all right uh, i'll i'll try it um ask elizabeth ask All right. Any other questions or comments about the common working group for Matt G or Sean? Uh, I have a question actually. When does this group meet next? 
either this Thursday or next Thursday. <laughs> it's next Thursday, so the 17th. And what time is that? 10 a.m. U.S. Central. Perfect. Uh, I have a question, Matt, um, regarding this stock. Um, oh. If I also have not really found a lot of published guidelines, but I feel like I know a couple of people that are thinking about this and are working on it from a research and corporate or academic perspective. At this stage, given that we're in sort of a public metrics review, do you think it would be proper to share it with, I want to say randos, because they're not random people, they're very specific people, but like I think in the absence of having third party materials to connect with, would we want to just open up reviews to people that are thought leaders on the topic? I, I think that'd be great. Um, if you reach out to them, could you kind of, I don't know how well you could signal the, like, we, we kind of want to get this done. So like, we don't want to make it big. There might be bigger things that we're missing, but like keeping it scoped in the time frame, that would be great because if, um, like if there's something in that document that is just horribly incorrect or just kind of pointing in the wrong direction, I'd love to get that feedback. Okay, um, I'll, I'll share it with a, I have a person in mind, so. Thank you. It should be fully editable by anybody with the link, so. Okay, thank you, Sophia. As always, you're a superstar. All right, next week we're looking at, uh, I'm sorry, were we done with Common? Are we good? We're done. All right. We're doing so well on time. Um, this is amazing. Okay, next week we're gonna do an up update from Evolution. Sean, will you be here next week? I will. All right, question mark. Changes to an exclamation point. You're locked in. Um, I'll be here. Awesome. Thank you. Um, the final thing on our uh, agenda is that there is an ongoing discussion about migrating to forums away from mailing lists. So if this is something that you are passionate about or have experience with, there's a temporary Slack channel here, which you are welcome to join. The conversation we have a planning doc where we're kind of just dumping some thoughts and ideas and some high level planning so you can see that in that doc uh, or in that slack channel i mean um yeah that's it i just want to make sure everybody knew that that was going on pretty much the decision has already been made just so you know that we are gonna do it so i think i, I think that's fair to say that We've had enough discussion, so now we're kind of moving to the implementation phase. I should, I should have clarified that. So, I'm gonna secretly turn off the mail list, and nobody will even know. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. There'll be three people who. Ask. <laughs> I'm one of the. I, I like. I'm the only one keeping it going. I think because those weekly. Yeah, with with the they, weekly with chaos yeah. weekly. <laughs> um, I don't think anybody reads them anyway. Like it would not be missed if I, they just started I read showing them. Them That's not true. I read them. Of course Aww, I do. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I did a mailing list one time for a, a very, a very, very large mailing list with like I don't know, a million, like literally like five hundred thousand subscribers, and I would put like little Easter eggs in there because I know nobody's reading this stuff. Like, who has time to read this? No one cares. So yeah. But apparently people did because they found them. So I was like, oh, <laughs> please don't fire me. It's fine. Yeah, just check in. Okay, anyway, um, so yeah, that's happening. If you, uh, again, I would really like if we have people who have done this before or have some insight, um, we would really value your experience and your opinion there. So let us know. Maybe when it comes time, I feel like um, Brian Warner at the LF has done this before and he might, we might want to reach out to him to see if he has time when it comes closer just to see what his thoughts are yeah like to the actual doing of the thing uh -huh. exactly Twitch. yeah 
yeah. Can That'd we get be good. the DNS resolved for our experiment? No. Okay. Can we reach out to Brian on that? Or... You can. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. All right. Well, we have tons of time. And so we can either give you that time back or we can talk about other stuff that we don't usually have time to talk about. Is there stuff that's on your mind that kept getting pushed off the list? I feel like this is the crazy time of year. One of them. No, I have nothing. Yeah. Elizabeth, the only um, thing that I... Um, back on video um the only thing that i had was and and maybe i might be getting too too far ahead of myself this um the uh the board meeting isn't it typically in may is that matt might have more and, and sean but um and i'm i'm thinking of uh you know we typically, I think, start getting ready for that in April. So, um, just wanted to put that on on radars, and okay. and and then we typically, um, you know, we'll ask for you know updates from the working groups, and it, you know, so that we have all of the latest and greatest information from from everybody, you know, in, in that uh, deck that we put together for that meeting. So. Just kind of wanted to put a little plug in there for, hey, we might be reaching out to <clears throat> to you all for, um, for for updates there. Yeah, and then I think uh, so. I guess that would be you and Sean would send around a doodle to find a day that works for the board members. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the other option is OSSNA. In, in June, yeah. yeah, and then we can have a virtual component there as well. But we could pretty easily, I'm guessing, get a you know just a boardroom. Are people going to that? I probably will. Yeah, I probably will. Sophia, I saw you unmuted. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably won't. Um, trying to plan a personal trip to Ireland, and I feel like I don't know if I want to travel right before I travel in case I can't travel. <laughs> hmm. um, my ultimate frisbee team made worlds, so what? Yeah. So you're like, uh, are you gonna be ESPN? No, no. This is like, this is the old people oh. division. <laughs> Um, it's a, I'm a master. We had master's nationals last July and our team won our division. So we're going awesome. to work. Congratulations. Um, thanks. I'm, I'm super excited. I've been <laughs> training all year for it. Um, mostly it's just like, I can't be falling apart and then playing a tournament. Um, but it's, it's the following week. So it might make that week challenging to travel before, but yeah. I mean, if it's going to doodle, then I mean, I, I would like to attend if it's my first board meeting. I don't know how these things are run, so I'm excited to see how see how that works. We could definitely do both, and I don't blame you for not wanting to travel before you travel for something yeah. like that. No, it gets hard. We just don't really know what the policies are going to be like either. Like, I feel like everything could change in a heartbeat. Um, I feel like the international travel policy has already been changing since February, but who knows? Yeah, that's um, I'm you know the if international travel to Europe could change in the coming weeks too, and it's easy. Yeah. Ultimate world is way more important than OSS. Yeah, yeah that's, like that's it's not even that's, close. That's, <laughs> it's not. No, it's it's really not. Yeah, all right. So this has totally changed be between when I booked my airline ticket before me flying to Berlin next week. It's like, okay, I don't have to run around trying to figure out how to do this PCR test right before I fly. Yay. <laughs> what if they insert it right before I have to fly home? Okay, now I have to go run around in another country and figure out how to do a PCR test before I hop on a plane. Not yay. 
<laughs> it's nuts. It was funny. Cause like, I, I couldn't figure stuff out. And so I handed it off to my husband. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, what do you mean that? And I went, and I looked, I'm like, they changed everything. <laughs> Wait, you need a PCR test now to come back into the U S no, you don't, you don't, oh. not right now. But that's what I'm saying is I'm afraid oh. of things changing gotcha. right where I leave and they're like, oh, you don't need one. And then I come back and they're like, oh yeah, now you need one. It's going to be that's, like, yeah. okay. But it, I, I think, think it's still a good test to get back in the United States. It, you it, do. It, yeah. I do need a PCR. Even it doesn't have to be PCR, just any test. test. A local accredited test, which. Okay. Whatever that means. Couple, Damn it. <laughs> no, I <laughs> You can just go to a pharmacy. That like can be really I, dicey. <laughs> I mean, I, I heard that you can now even do antigen tests over Zoom, so they sort of monitor you when you did the test. But oh, I've okay. I've heard somebody who did that. Yeah, I've heard that too. So you you bring a, a like a mobile kit with you and you do teledoc, and they watch you do it. But I thought that wouldn't count for international evaluation. Well, I did in this case. It was they were in South America, so. Hmm. Yeah. I think they relaxed the they relaxed the standards. Like, I mean, it's ever changing, right? So you never know what's going to happen next month. But. <laughs> okay. Whereas, I'm... I I had to pay one hundred fifty dollars a person a few months ago flying back. For oh PCR yeah, no, test. it was like yeah. the cheapest I could find in Austin was two hundred dollars, and the and the first, but the first one, of course, that came up on a search was four hundred and fifty dollars, and I'm just like. Oh my God, for me and my husband traveling, you know, I'm like, I, I can't afford that. That's nuts. But like, where do, you, where you, do you live? They have free ones in New York City if you can get here for less than that. Well, the problem is, is they have free ones in Austin, but they don't guarantee, you know, it, you don't know how many days it's going to take. And so like with my husband, he got it that evening with me, it took three days. And so you don't know, and I can't risk that. You know, I have to like know that I'm going to find out that day whether or not I have it so that I can, you know, handle things. I can't just, do you know what I mean? It's like, and then you have the 48 hour window and blah, 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 blah. And so, and it's really hard to get testing appointments in Austin. I don't know why, but the last time I, I did it like a few weeks ago and it was really hard. So I had to wait like a week and a half. Um, but it was, you know, so it's just, it's weird on that for the, for the travel ones, they fill up. Um, because they uh, the printouts and all the other different stuff that they give you. So I don't know. But I'm going to be, hopefully, all that will work and I will be at Berlin talking at Backstage. So um, and meeting people and hanging out and stuff. I, hope so for you. <laughs> I will. I'm both like, I'm both like thrilled and terrified. So and normally I'm a really good traveler. But do you know what I mean? It's like, uh, you'll do great. Yeah, you'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> not worried about it. Well, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not worried about talking. I, I can talk anywhere. Um, I'm more worried about all the logistics and getting stuck somewhere, or, you know, getting COVID while I'm there and then stuck in Germany for the next month or two, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> That's what scares me. Those seems like reasonable concerns. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be little Miss Mask paranoid. It's like, no, I'm not going to eat out at restaurants. No, I'm not going to do any of those different things. I'm still going to be like very paranoid because I don't want to accidentally get it there and then not come, be able to come back home. Yeah. And that just doesn't work. Not, yeah. not with kids and a cat. It's just not going to happen. All right. Do we have any final stuff to talk about? I do not. I would just mention the OSS Summit North America deadline is a week from, it's like six days from now on Monday the 14th. So if you want to submit something, that is when you have until. <clears throat> Thanks for that. And there's a link to those, that place where you submit your talk. There's a link in the previous right. and we weeks, have a minutes. Yep, and I think there's a couple more weeks beyond that if you want to do the OSS Summit Europe talk. Maybe it's a month. Because that's later in Dublin. All right, well, I guess that's it. All right, thank you. We get seven minutes Everybody? back.
You're welcome. Seven minutes. Wow. I don't know what you're going to do with that. It's so much time. Great to see everybody. everyone. We'll see you next time. Yep. Bye. Next time. Bye. Bye.